You're the alpha dog, and we've got one tremendous program for you today. I've been wanting to get this woman uh, in an interview on a broadcast for a long time. Brooke, uh, Brooke Furnish. Hi, kid. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me on. Man, I am excited for this one. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. We're going to be talking about don't hire a high-tech vendor until you watch this broadcast. Tell me about the vendors in the space, Brooke. Man, there are there are so many. First off, there are awesome, awesome companies out there that do a phenomenal job. We want to first start with that and call it the, some awesome, incredible companies out there that do a phenomenal job. But obviously with the title of the show is that there are some out there that are bad actors. And yes, so do we have both of them? Yeah, 100% we do. But champion the ones that are and the ones that are Make sure that when you do look at them, that you would say, thank you for that. But before you go hire any of these, I just cannot stress this enough. And anyone that knows me knows that I preach this like crazy. I don't care if it's a button on your website. I don't care if it's the latest and greatest thing because we're all going, and Jimmy Yurder and I were just talking about this, we're going into conference season. So I call it the red shiny object syndrome. They're like, oh, oh my gosh. The season, they're coming out of the woodwork. I know, they're coming out of the woodworks, right? So like, oh, I got to have this. I got to have this. I'm hearing things. We came, we came off uh, NADA you know, back in January. And I had my clients come, coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, this and this. And I go, where the hell did you hear about this? Like, And like, here, this and this. And I go, okay, let's rewind here for a hot second. I don't care if it's a CTA. I don't care if it's a phone system, a finance, whatever it is. A lead provider. A <laughs> Like yeah, a, whatever. AI it is. is a buzzword. AI is the latest buzzword. Yeah, Everybody and all of this AI. stuff is great. Just understand, do you really, really need it? Like work, I like to say work backwards to work forwards. Like, do you have the people and process in place? And are they doing a good job? Because it may be the latest and greatest thing since sliced bread. But if your people and process suck, the, the technology is going to suck. But if people and process are really, really great and you want to enhance that, then yeah. But before you go and hire that amazing X, Y, Z, you better do a freaking, and Jim, I respect you enough that I just said freaking. Anyone that knows me, have, I have a hate sailor's mouth. But you better interview them because they have done everything to put the perfect little numbers together in a vacuum to give you that. So now you've got to interview them like crazy and say, okay, how can we both work together to make that outcome that you just gave me? I want to get to that. So how do we get to that? And then see what they say back to you. And then interview them, interview them, interview them. Don't just hire them because they gave you a nice little PowerPoint with little stars and slides and stuff like that. And not, so, just, yeah. and not, just, and not just that, but don't trust the vendor's uh, references because the references are their bell yes. cow dealers. They, they've lined up two or three suck-ups that, <laughs> that are their bell cow dealers. Uh, when they give you references, say, I want 10 more. Yes. Work your connections, Jim. I'll have people that reach out to me they're like, hey, Brooke, so we're looking at product XYZ. Okay, great. I know that you are going to be 100% honest with me, Brooke. What's the product really like? Your product, I'm, we're, we're product agnostic. So those like, okay, who, who do, what's the what really like? I'm like, okay, we want 10, you know, we want five more references. Great. Go talk to A, B, and C. Always ask for more exactly what you said and reach out to your context. This industry is so awesome. I love this industry. That being said, it's so small. Reach out to your contacts and find out, hey, is this product really going to last on the sun, the moon, the stars? Oh, and also give us winning lottery ticket numbers? Oh, my gosh. If it does, please let me know because I want the product. Please. Please, Jim. Right? If they wine and dine you too much. Oh. <laughs> and, and the other thing you got to watch out for is the if you cancel a vendor, they fly in the big guns to keep you with that vendor. <laughs> they oh, bring in the, the heavy closers. Yes. Yes. Jim, I funny story on that. So I am actually working in a dealership uh, at one point. And I've got one when I was working with the dealership, one I was not working the de actually in the dealership. And hey, April, good to see you. Oh, love that woman. And they, the dealership was canceling a, a product. And I'm just going to keep it very generic. And they not only flew in, they told us to come in on a Saturday. And they kept us on a Saturday, dun, 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 for eight 
hours and a Nobody little tiny comfort. No. Eight hours of dealership. And I was like, man, seriously? Yeah. So I, I mean, I've seen everything for, yeah, that's a, that's a big, I know it's going to flip here. So however you're looking at this post live stream, post stream, eight hours. Eight hours. I, <laughs> yeah. Like if, and when you really do have the dealer's best interest and you've vetted it and sometimes things just don't work out. Like we've all been through breakups. It happens. Like it happens. Like, like world, world things happen. That's when it's just like, Hey, I understand that this doesn't work out. I hope later on that we can cross paths and work for, again. You want to make sure because this industry is so small that you can work with that person again. Like don't burn that bridge. I've had it happen recently as well. where a dealership. Uh, not that you would ever leave my services cause I'm incredible, but they left another agency and it was just, it was bad. And they full out told the dealer, yeah, you're not going to like us for the next little bit. Like, tell me, about your, tell me about your company for a second. Okay. My company, we're a BZ consultants group. And like I said before, we are product agnostic. Our whole goal is to inspect what dealers should be expecting out of a vendor, out of whatever it may be. And that's, I say digital marketing, but that's really broad because that could be your ad agency. It could be your phones. It could be Google analytics. And that can be a very scary word. We take all that technical jargon and take it and say, let's work that report into actionable items. Cause I hate not that I hate data, but that's a word that people throw around and anyone can take a look. Oh, everybody's got data. Oh, everyone has data. And they say they can do it. How do you take data. that data and turn it into an actual item and say, hey, Mr. Ms. Dealer, from here, here's how you can improve on it. Hey, that data here, here's how you can do X, Y, and Z with it. So if a dealer wants to sit on a, in a meeting with me, great, fantastic. If you just want to get back to selling cars, great. I will hold X, Y, and Z vendor accountable and get back to you and say, here's what they're saying. I, we do not sell anything. We don't do it. We literally just take all of your vendors. What is your, what is your website? Bzconsultantsgroup.com. Okay. That works out real well. Okay. It's pretty easy. BZ yeah, like easy. Yeah. I can, I can type that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. I also hold a uh, host a podcast every Friday. Uh, it's facts, not feelings. Hence the thing. Cause I'm really, really, as April knows, is that too many people get caught up in, oh, I feel that this works or I feel this way. Cut through the drama of how you feel and get down into the facts of this works. Work those facts. Work what actually is working versus what is not working and get through it. I mean, it's, it's just too often it's, uh, April had this discussion a ton that, oh, I feel that Miller worked. Oh, I feel that this lead provider works. Really? Really? You think it does? Did you know that the, actually that platform that you're using has zero engagement? It actually had two, you know, hundred percent zero engagement and you're spending $4,000 a month on it. So maybe you, why you feel that or, way, the I data proves know. otherwise. Yeah. And you know what else is a big pile of stinky poo poo is um, a big steamy pile of stinky poo poo is attribution. Yeah, that's that's another buzzword, my friend. We're, we're going on all the buzzwords, Jim. All of them. Ad, when, when somebody tells you they've got attribution, that is the most bogus science or anti-science or pseudo-science science in the world. We have attribution. We helped make the sale. No, you didn't. You know, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, well, you, know, you can't live without us. Yeah. No secret yeah, that I don't like cars.com. I don't like cars.com. I've never liked cars.com. I, I don't like their ancestors. I mean, okay, everybody knows that's personal opinion. I could be wrong. But so still that's more of a feeling versus a fact. Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> oh, well, well, it's a definite <laughs> feeling. I don't like cars.com. I mean, um, but that's just me. That's a personal opinion. And, that's you okay. Know, but, but all in all, I think lead providers in general are dinosaurs being sucked down in the tar pits, eating the last brown shriveled leaves off the trees. <laughs> I, I can respect that opinion of that. I, I think we're going to probably differ on that a little bit, but I can definitely respect your opinion on that. Yeah. There are so many. You're things. allowed to disagree with me. Yeah, I'm, that that's the, Jim. That's I what makes us. I respect your right to be wrong. <laughs> and that's what makes this world so great is that we all have so many different opinions and so many different views and that's what makes the world so great. I, I, there are so many different ways to look at things. Right. And so anytime I go into any store, 
I'll look at all of their data first off and say, okay, why are you with X, Y, and Z, whatever it may be. And it's, oh, we've always done it that way. Okay. Not a great way to look at stuff, but I respect that opinion. And we'll go through, and there are certain geographical areas that certain lead providers do well. I'll, I'll, I'll take like, I was having a conversation earlier with a colleague and friend and I go, you know, you look at like a progressive.com or a kayak or Expedia and everyone, for the most part, the general public will go to those sites to say, Hey, let's go look at what these the travel plans are. Now, personally, I'm a, I'm a diehard Delta. I fly Delta. So I'm going to go straight to Delta, but for the majority of travelers, we're going to go to something where everything's listed there and they can see everything there. And that's how most people are going to go to a site. Now, how a shopper goes, they're going to go straight to an OEM manufacturer site. That's one type of shopper. How someone goes to a cars.com, that's a different type of shopper. So all these shoppers are different and how the spend is, is very different. When you start to dive into that, man, it's really, really crazy on what it actually costs you. But then it also comes down to, Jim, is how the, the agency they've chosen and how it's being how it's being administered, because that also is very, very different. So if you don't have your eye on it of where your money is being spent and what provider, because not all providers are created equally. And I know that you are very, very well aware of that. So when I look to see, okay, for instance, I was going through one of our clients recently and I said, they're like, oh, well, X provider is just not doing a good job for us. I go, okay, how do you know that? Well, we didn't get enough leads. Okay, let's look at this. We looked through, they'd actually had more leads for the first 30 days and they've had for the last 90 days based on this. Like, okay, let's look at this a little bit more. What's your process and house? Well, we don't know. So we went through a little bit more. Well, what it was is actually, they didn't have enough, their process and house was not great. They didn't have enough people in house to handle that. The, the traffic from X provider was, was more engaging than it had ever been, but it was falling flat because in house, they could not handle it. So we went back to a couple of other ones. We said, Hey, Everything, all this money you're spending is honestly being lit on fire because in-house, you guys can't handle it. So we went through and looked at their SEO, their SEM, and we saw the same thing over and over again. I go, you guys can go ahead. If you guys want to spend more money, you definitely can, but you're going to continue to light your money on fire. So you look at all the other lead providers and same thing. Are you priced to market? Do you have photos on your website? Do you have photos on your third-party site? Do you involve chat? Do you have click to call? All these things are they, do you have a random lead provider that you, maybe you canceled, but they're still showing inventory out there? Do you look at that? Because now you're telling the customer, oh yeah, we didn't even know that was there, but now they're spending a lead and they're pissed off at you because you didn't even know we had inventory out there. So there's all these different things that if you're not constantly inspecting what you expect out of it, you're just making a horrible customer journey. Now, and customer dealers, insurance. dealer principles, Pay attention. Dealers, every day there's a myriad of vendors hitting your, your service director, your GSM, your GM, who uh, your BDC director. Who has the ability to make a purchase in your name? I'm, I'll guarantee you, you're hiring vendors you don't even know you have. Oh, Because some manager hired them and that manager might not even be with you anymore. When was the last time you as a general manager or a dealer principal audited, you know, when, when did you go through the financial statement and sign the checks and see exactly who you're paying for services? Oh man, Jim, that's a whole, that's a whole topic in itself. The Isn't amount of time. Oh, so I, I look at all of that as well is that we go through and I would say within the six, first 60 days of, of a client coming on board. And it, once again, I don't pitch products. That's not what we do. We literally just pull back the curtain and say, oh, by the way, do you own your data? Now that we're trying, now that if it's, there are certain companies out there that still say, nope, you can't own your own data. And that, that leads me to drinking first off. Secondly, if we can get to the point that they can't own their own data, then it's like, holy crap, I'm paying what? Yeah, that's what you're paying. And then it's like, okay, so we can save this. We can save this thousand dollars. We can save. So they end up saving significant money within the first 60 days just by saying, holy crap, I see this now. And I was paying this. Oh, wait, this person has access to my data. This per Yeah. And not only that. Wait a second. Like, now you're, you're into a subject I was talking to Sean Well, I, I, I saw ago. that. Yeah. Ago. Yeah. I mean, it, it's crazy. Uh, though. Who, who is exporting data out of your CRM, your website and your, and your DMS? 
Well, it's not just, it's not just third parties. You'd be shocked how many times the dealers do it as well. The dealers do it as well. And that like within a given week, the amount of times I get dealers or OEMs or insert whatever that will send an email to me with PII, just riddle with PII. And I go, do you guys, this is, this is illegal to do this. Or I'll have said per, uh, name a person that's upset with me that I won't send a sold list or a sold loss list. PII, to them. personal information. Good job. See, you learned. Look at that. You all, you know what it is now. Look at that. It, <laughs> what? Yeah. So it's just amazing how many times I will get upset. <laughs> how how many times people, <laughs> I'm in Chicago, so it works. But the people will be upset with me that I won't send that to them. I'm like, no, but I will send you a secure link where you can go view it. Or I'll, I will have, I've actually had DM, DMS providers send me an entire a uh, sold list that includes everything about the customer. And I go, what, what uh, seriously? Not only is that illegal, your cyber insurance better be freaking astronomical oh, it, because it, you it, put incredible. the deal at risk and you put yourself at risk and you just broke look, look what so April many laws. Said. April said they sneak them in on the part statement. Yes. She's talking about managers that want to hire a vendor without permission from the GM or the dealer, they'll, they'll, they'll sneak it in on the part statement. I'm trying to, and, and so if anybody like sees me like rapidly squinting, I have about two inches, five inches of vision right now. So Jeff, I see you're, you're saying, uh, you talked about dealer sites having dingleberries, uh, connected to website and DMS from old vendors. Uh, yeah, it's a massive, that is such a, yeah, that's a Jeff, you know, I've done like five episodes on GLBA and FTC compliancy. It's just, it's a nightmare uh, about that. So it, that's like something as well is that I know that you touched on, so I don't want to get too much into it. So it was on your last episode. Like we'll, we'll go through each month within the first 30, 60 days and just say, okay, how many GTM containers are on your site and go through and just delete them. And then the pixels, and then just say every single month, you need to go through this and work with your website provider and do that because it's such a big thing to say. And especially when the turnover happens that then the old, old providers still have accesses to it. It's amazing that they've got someone in for like eight years ago, collecting data on them. It's like, you, that, that's a, that's illegal to do that. You can't do that. So and once again, going back, go ahead. Oh, no. oh, oh hang on one second. Uh, Jamie, Jamie uh, just said, uh, what employees have access to your, to your DMS, your, and, and own your, your, all your, all your code, all your sign in passwords, everything. Yep. What ex employees still have access to your stuff? A lot. A lot. And a lot. Jamie, Jamie will know this. Jamie and I actually worked together back in Infinity and my Infinity is working for the OEM and you would have employees, or I would have dealerships that would literally get so frustrated with me. And I'm like, you guys stop using John Smith at Gmail. Because at that point, when John Smith leaves the dealership, John Smith is taking all of his customers, not yours, Mr. And Mrs. ABC dealer. They're now his customers. Oh, that's just the way we're doing it. Okay, then great. So don't be mad when that happens. And now when John Smith leaves, well, I go in there and I see that John Smith is still in your CRM. John Smith is still in every single application. So John Smith can still export all the information. So it hits John Smith's dealership, not yours, Mr. And Mrs. Dealer. It's crazy how much I see this. Or let me let me this. give you a better, a better, another example, not a better example, but another one. Bring it. Okay. And this this was innocent. My 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 web designer, good friend, Jay Scarron, passed away last summer. Unexpectedly, forty years old, heart attack, dropped dead. And when and when and when, and Jay was a good friend. Um, I found out I didn't own any of my websites. I didn't own any of my platforms, and I had a ton of them. His wife didn't know where the passwords are. And I mean, it, what a nightmare trying to unravel that with a new web web designer. And uh, GoDaddy wouldn't talk to me. Nope. Nope. You're GoDaddy not the owner. Nope. Not the and, admin. And he, had, he had masked them with, yeah. with, 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 a, with a masking service that there's an, another layer, layer of who owned the websites. And then some of the websites from WordPress and other other platforms, I didn't have those passwords. And it took us. And his wife was very little help. She she wasn't um, savvy, and we 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 had a we had to guess the passwords. 
Man, Jim, so it's a shocking how often this happens. I'll go into stores. I mean, going whether it's Google Analytics, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's say that you're I know this is automotive, but let's say that you're you're on this you're you're doing another group site that has group sites that's on your uh, WordPress of some sort, whatever it is. And I go in there and they don't own any of it. Like I've obviously had to build my own website. And if you don't own anything, whether it's I, I just recently was dealing with one of my other cl- same thing with the client and the OEM is trying to own everything. I go, no, 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 you have to own it. Cause if, if you're, if you get hit by a bus, who now owns this? Because now X, Y, Z owns it and you do not own this. You have to own everything. Not only is it, is it whether it's Facebook meta is mandating, Google mandates it. You have to own everything because that this this stuff happens so much. Uh, Jamie's saying here, GMB and social pages uh, are the way in store now. Like Jamie, you say that, but and it's very very true. It is. Sh- it's not even shock anymore because I deal with this on a daily basis. That the OEM and agencies are saying, "Oh no no, we'll handle that for you. You don't need to owe that." So then, what happens is then they change the ad agency. They lose everything. And so then you've got to recreate everything. And even with Facebook, Facebook over the last like year, there's been more and more uh, hackings of the business page. So you've got to constantly make sure not only that you own it, but then you have MFA, which is multi-factor authentication. And with GLBA, you should have it anyways, but still people aren't doing it. Audit, so, audit your agency's billing. I'm yeah. going to tell you, there's a lot of fraudulent billing from dealership uh, marketing agencies, a ton of fraudulent billing, especially on on their social media buys, their, their Facebook AdWords and such, be very careful that they're, they're, they're not billing you for the true cost. Yeah, so with that, I'll expand on that a little bit. So if an agency is saying, oh, I'm going to take 10% of your advertising, run as fast as you can. A, a, a agency that has your best interest is going to say, here's the fee, and we don't benefit if you increase or decrease your spend. And what do I mean by that? If they're saying that we're going to take a percentage of your spend, then they're going to want you to increase your spend. If, if, if you don't increase your spend or increase your spend, they, they're not going to benefit that. So at any point, it's like, hey, they're going to be more of a, hey, we benefit because you benefit. And it, then I have been on the other side of those calls to hold them accountable. And they said, hey, you know what? This month we sucked. And I have been, and I know that that sounds crazy. Well, wait, someone actually was accountable. Yes, I have been in those meetings multiple times. There's really good agencies that said, dang it, man, this is where we sucked. And this is how we're going to get better. Or, hey, the numbers did, but here's the reason why they did. It wasn't necessarily that something went wrong. The Google went haywire or, hey, Facebook, blah, blah, but they're giving a reason. And here's how we're going to get better. But when you have someone that says, we're going to constantly take 10% or 20%, or we're on the bill, we're not going to necessarily disclose everything. We're just going to make you guess what it is. What? So yes, 100% look at it. And going back to April's comment, a lot of time, the OEM third party leads come on the part statement. So you got to really look to see where those are and then go back and, and I cannot stress enough, go back and fight those third party leads that are the duplicate leads that were, I won't say crap leads, but didn't go anywhere. I know everyone on this channel, everyone that's commenting right now, we've all been a part of those third party leads that weren't great. Fight those leads. That's your money. What, they're like 30 bucks a lead. Like go back and fight those. If you don't know how, reach out to your OEM uh, regional person or your DM drastic manager and say, hey, I'm having some issue with that. They'll help you with that. There are Just, 3% yeah. leads and 18% yes. leads. We know that. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, the and, probability and, of closing. People say well, there are no bad leads. Yes, there are. Yeah, the there's the quality versus quantity. I will. I'll take the leads that I'll take a hundred leads that are closing at eighteen percent versus five thousand leads that close at three three percent. They might have yeah. signed up at an auto show for a raffle, and they're counting that as a lead. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, and and those leads. I mean, how you treat those leads—that's something. A whole other thing is if it's a hand raiser, how you're approaching that lead. If you're if you're sending out regular communication, or you're don't even get me started on templates. But a template. Hey, I saw you're interested. No, they're not interested. How you approach that hand raiser versus if it's a tier one, tier two, or tier three. Very, very different. So that, that goes back to process and house. Are you training your people? Are you personalizing every response? Are you sending a video? That's 
That's a whole, that's a whole other topic, Jim. Whole other topic. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, when I was talking to Sean a couple of weeks ago, and I want to get this into this broadcast as well. We talked about people exporting information off your website, mm -hmm. off, out, of, out, of your, out of your technology. And on your website, Ghostery. Yep. Ghostery is the website. There's, there, there it is on the screen. Mm -hmm. Ghostery.com will tell you exactly what information is being exported out of your website. And I remember your your web designer built that into your website in many cases and sold your data. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are some websites that do that. There, uh, not all websites do, but there are definitely some websites. And I want to expand on this because I, I saw that and I was like, "Ooh, I hope we get to talk about this." Because there are knowing uh, if you go to the top on some websites and you get to the top of said certain websites and you get to see how how their processes and why they do that. Uh, it's like, we're talking English, right? And you and I understand mm -hmm. each other, right? And other website providers, they do things differently and not, sometimes it's maliciously, sometimes it's honestly, it's pure ignorance because they're basing their, their all of their data, all of their reports are on a proprietary dashboard and they want to do it this way. So when you're trying to have a conversation with the lower, like the, their, the regular employee that's actually, you know, the account manager and you say, Hey, I, we want X, Y, and Z done. You're talking English. They're talking Japanese and they have no, you'll never have a communication because the very, very top, they have chosen to do business in a way that is not in line with Google. It's not in line with anybody else. And so because of that, it screws up the entire ecosystem. Uh, and I know I'm talking very vague now. I'm just trying to be very politically correct right now. But that that also then leads to a very poor consumer experience. It leads to a bad deal. So who who ends up losing? We talked about this earlier. The dealer and the consumer. So the the dealer starts to try to look at their analytics. Like, wait a second, why 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 is my data showing in? And I saw Dusty on here earlier. Why is my data showing in Coffeeville, Kansas, when I'm in Illinois? Like 90% of my traffic showing up there. Well, it's because your said website provider who's also your ad agency isn't doing things the, the correct way, which also is shipping your stuff off to a place. Now it really could be served in the right way, but they, they're, they've chosen to do things in a very archaic way. Um, so it's very, it's not up to par. Let's talk about specifics. CRM. Okay. I, I remember when CRM was was much more simplistic. Now it's and now it's gotten a lot of technology. I, I was at beginning. I was I was there at the beginning of CRM. You know, I I remember when when, when CRM was much more simplistic. But now they've incorporated video. They've incorporated text. They've incorporated all sorts of technologies. And a lot of the older CRMs that are once were the most popular CRMs are putting band-aids because they were never designed for what today's CRMs need to do. Take okay. that, take that and run with it. So CRM. So I actually, uh, like most people get into the auto industry. Uh, you weren't ever thinking I'm going to get in the auto industry. I've always had a love for cars. I, my background is actually in the medical field and then came into the auto industry uh, mm -hmm. it, actually as a consultant for a CRM company. Uh, and it was at the time the, the best CRM company, but like most CRMs companies decided that they took their foot off the gas and then another CRM company passed them. And there really hasn't been a lot of advancement in CRM companies for a long time. And what you see now is you have CRM companies that there's, there's not a lot of technology. And so they're very, very archaic. And you have, now it's just like a, a glorified, I won't say glorified Excel company, but you don't have, you don't have APIs, you don't have integration and you have, we're just going to hold on to our data as tight as possible and we're not going to let anybody integrate with it. And then I'll, I'll couple that. You get outside the auto industry and you've got a HubSpot. HubSpot has a free version. It has a $30 a month version. And I can integrate anything with it versus we have this clunky thing over here that feels like it's technology from 1980 that nothing wants to integrate it. Now, that's partly our, our industry that says, I'm going to hold my data here because I'm this company. I'm going to hold my data over here because I'm this company and I don't want to work with anybody. Well, okay. That takes it one step further into GLBA land that says, wait a second. 
we have these big companies, and I'm not going to go on the cooperable thing because I know you guys talked about that. Is oh, okay. I, I I say Reynolds and Reynolds is holding your high, your data. It's high. not just Reynolds. It's not just Reynolds. It's not just Reynolds. But you've got GLBA that says okay, everyone has to be GLBA client, and you've got these companies that are pushing. We're going to make you 100% GLB compliant, and they're full out lying to you. And I've done enough of these oh, oh, okay. shows. I'm with you. Yeah. With so you. Uh, co uh, OEMs are pushing X companies to say they're going to make you 100% compliant, and they're not. And the biggest portion of that is the ADF XML portion. That is not GLBA compliant. Yet the way to do that is that you have to have website companies come together, chat companies, uh, CRM companies. You have to have everyone coming to the table to say, what are we going to do to resolve the ADF XML portion? So all that to say about CRMs is that they're there, but they need a massive, massive, uh, oh, I'll say my, Facebook. My biggest, my biggest joke is, hey, look, it's the end of the month. Has Vin crashed yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, and, that's, see, she didn't say that. I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just there. You look in there and there's it's which way. How many times can we skate Brooke? How many times can we put Brooke in the CRM? I, I still get I still get emails about a car that I haven't had for 12 years. Um, uh, you have CRMs. Clean that, data. Clean yeah. data is a big issue. They're not talking pure cars. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and even with that, so, I, and I'm sure Aaron or um, uh, it's, um, anybody will come on here from, uh, from data miner is that you have to look and say, okay, where are we sitting with push pull integration? Cause it can't just be with the CRM. It's gotta be with Brian Pash just put out, hit, put it out about the CDP. I haven't had a chance to look at it because I have five inches of vision, but it was an 83 page uh, document uh, research on CDPs. And I know there's so much talk about CDPs. We still have a really far way to go before we can actually get to that. But customer lifetime value has been talked about for a long time. It's just now you've got companies that are, are working towards that. So the CDP is where, is where we're going to because CRMs couldn't fulfill that because they fell short. So the CRM is just, a, it's a bunch of crap information in there. It's not that it's crap. That's your first party data, but it should be clean. But instead what we try to do is say, I don't want to, I don't want him to skate me. So I'm going to put Brooke's name in a little differently. And then my question to you is if Lee came in 15 different times, who are you giving credit to it? Well, I don't know. So it's, it's just, you have to have it, but it's, it's a lot of bad information, garbage in, garbage out. Okay. CRMs, um, a lot of CRMs evolving, a lot of, a lot of CRMs hiring outside vendors to supplement what they can't do and were never designed to do. To do. So we got a lot of that happening in the market. Um, uh, new DMSs are coming coming left and right, and I, I know what you know who I'm talking about. I do. I, I think I do. I'm sure you're talking about Techion. Yeah, I am talking Techion. Okay. What and about them? Well, right now, a lot of people are, are saying Techion is, is the best thing since sliced bread. But, you know, other than the best thing since sliced bread, what does your DMS or your CRM report back to the manufacturer? That is a big uh, The CRM, not so much. What the, because the CRM is not necessarily reporting back. It's what the GM or the GSM, they're taking that report and usually uploading that somewhere. So it's usually from the, they're pulling from the DMS. It's not yeah. necessarily from the CRM. It still goes uh, out of the DMS, yes. Yeah, so like I'll have, and once again, it's how, how are they pulling that? Uh, so I've actually, I've seen multiple DMSs that are, they're not secure, which that's all, what's gonna hold their topic, hold their topic. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> OEMs are gonna pull that. And it's always interesting to see where, where the numbers don't match up. Like you'll say the DMS is supposed to be your Bible, Yet that's not clean either. And then the OEM will get like, oh, here's here's this number. That's funny. How did you get that number? Because that number's not accurate. Okay. Aren't you pulling from the DMS? Well, yeah. Well, then how did you get that number? <laughs> I like, guess not, yeah. not a correct number. But, you know, that's also any rep I go back. I just saw Dusty cl uh, uh, comment up there. And that is why it's so important. Any report is a, is a one-dimensional report. Until you can actually go and look at that and work the facts. Because you can take... I had a, uh, someone, you know, statistics are just, you can manipulate them when you want, but actually taking that report, whatever it may be, and working the facts to say, okay, what does this actually mean? And is it accurate? And it, how many times do people just, what's the saying? Like 90, 60% of the, the stats are made up. Like, yeah, like anybody can make any number up. So is it actual 
true data? And is, is it true? What does it mean? Because the amount of times that people will throw stuff down, you're like, wait, that's, that wow. doesn't, that's not right. And then going back and looking at it. So yeah, OEMs definitely pull that stuff. Jim Sherwood just said on the sidelines, hey, I, um, a friend who's going to start a business to send generic invoices to car dealerships. Oh, Jeff, I don't know if you and I had this conversation. I've had friends that actually do this. They literally send, they send invoices to dealerships that will send it. So you've done it too, but I've had, I've had multiple friends that will full out send invoices to dealerships just to see if they'll pay them. And it's like, I think it's like 90% of dealerships will just pay, they pay them. Well, I didn't have like, 90%, but I, I started, I started that, that I'll take credit for starting that. And I, I started that at a 20 group 25 years ago, 30 years ago. And I'm, I'm standing in the center of the big horseshoe at an NADA 20 group. And I handed half the dealers in the room an envelope. And in the envelope was their own check for like a $65. I did it several times mm -hmm. because I had invoiced this dealer and their people had cut me a check and I was handing it back to them at a 20 group. And it is so easy. You could, you could absolutely. So Jeff, you're absolutely right. You can make a business sending bogus invoices yep. to dealerships because they pay them because the dealers don't sign their own checks. Oh, it's so true. Like I, I have looked at expenses before and I go, Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm not your CFO. I'm looking at stuff and based on the advertising spends and every, cause I look at all the spend and I go through it and I go, based on what I'm seeing here, something's not adding up now, not your CFO. I want to be very clear. Maybe you guys want to take a look at this and it's like, Oh, thanks Brooks. Thanks. Thanks so much. And they'll go back and it's like, and it's off. It's not off by a little. And I'll catch it. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. <laughs> so it's like, you know, maybe, maybe look at this, just a thought. But it's that is also why it doesn't matter if it's your lead providers, it doesn't matter if it's an ad agency, it's your website provider, it doesn't matter whatever it is, if it's whatever, you've got to have a pulse on your business and just saying, are we inspecting what we expect out of fill in the blank? But it is so crucial to whatever you're doing to constantly be looking at that. So then when something happened, it's not like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that happened, Jim. I didn't, you know, that caught me off guard. No, it shouldn't catch you off guard. Mm -hmm. If someone walks out the front door because they're pissed off, were you inspecting what you expected out of that employee? What did you, were you inspecting what you expected out of your back of the house, your front of the house? You got to constantly be inspecting what you expect out of things. It's, it's, you shouldn't okay, be surprised let's get by into lead. Let's get into lead providers. Okay. Now, I, I am, I am, I am of the belief that lead providers are rapidly becoming extinct. The dealers could could duplicate uh, by buying their, their their own SEO, their best, their own SEM. They can buy their their social media advertising. TikTok's even selling cars now. Uh, there there are ways to sell cars. You don't need lead providers. It, that's my my. My personal opinion, based on the fact that I have an IQ higher than a termite. <laughs> take that, take that, go with it, Brooke. Yeah, so uh, I, I respect that opinion. Um, there are, I go back, I guess, what do you consider a lead provider? Let's start with that. Okay, let's, let's say True Car, Auto Trader, <laughs> Cars.com. Um, you can, um, yeah, Cargo. Car gurus, okay. which I and I, I doubly don't like them. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's that's a yeah. Okay. I don't I, like cars. Cars. dot com, but I really don't like car gurus. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would say with uh, there there are definitely I will say lead providers are not created equally, and if you regardless what you choose on your lead provider. I cannot stress enough that you do your deal, due diligence to vet them. Um, there are there are lead providers that want access to everything, and you better lock that down real quick. Like, and if you and Jim, you know what I'm talking about when I say the this. The agreement. Yes, and not only the that end is user the license end user agreement license. on every And contract. when you cancel a lead provider, I cannot stress enough there are certain lead providers that you have to submit two cancellations to them, not one, two. One, you cancel with them. And the second one, if the terminology isn't right, you have to send a second cancellation to them so that your inventory is taken offline. 
I know we that doesn't make mention any sense. them by name, Cox. Uh, but anyway, yeah, <laughs> it's actually the, it's actually this, this, that one, but it's another one as well. Uh, otherwise, yeah. they'll continue to sell, sell, put your inventory online. So, are is a lead provider a bad thing? No, it's not. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, data shows otherwise that uh, that lead providers aren't bad. I go back to what's your process in house and how are you handling those um, for so many reasons. It's now if you're going to say I'm going to take every lead provider out there, I do not agree with that uh, for multiple reasons. What is your SEO like and what is your SEM like? What is your social like? There are so many different things in addition to that. If I look and say, I'm going to take auto trader, just pulling out of the air right now. I'm going to take auto trader. If I look at your auto trader and you're spending whatever on it, and I see that you continually as a dealer don't price things, you don't have photos, you don't have a chat on it, that it's not optimized. Honestly, you shouldn't have it. If I look at any of the other ones and you, if I also look to see that the engagement on it, and once again, product agnostically, I'm looking to see the engagement's not good on it. I'd get rid of it. But if I look on, uh, we'll take it, I'll take cars.com. If I look at cars.com and your engagement is through the roof on it, like I've got multiple dealers right now that they're closing their uh, auto trader leads higher than their leads on any other provider. So if that's the case, I'm always going to tell them that to keep that versus I look at their other four thir third party lead providers and their engagement's horrible on it, like horrible. So I, I let the data always lead. I'm going to, as all, people know me, it's facts, not feelings. I'm always going to stick with what is the data telling me? And then from there, I'm going to make my decision because I can have a feeling of like, man, I really don't like XYZ provider because I've had a bad experience with them. I also know geographically, geographically, certain lead providers are always going to do better. That's just, they always do. Even with that, I'm always going to go back to what is the data telling me? Okay, this is an anomaly. I mean, I, I literally last month, I had a couple of dealers that all of a sudden desktop views skyrocketed. Like why, why are people viewing desktop more on your site versus mobile? Like everyone views websites on mobile, but for some reason, like if I just automatically assume, okay, mobile is going to be the most, I would have, I would have been wrong. So I always am going to go back to data on that. That was a long winded the, answer. The, the biggest thing I, when I say I don't like certain lead providers is because they also serve up your lead to other, to other dealers with similar units. Once you paid for the lead and you're working the lead and all of a sudden they got five more dealers on the sidebar and their and their advertisement on television or other media says dealers are criminals. We are the salvation. Any any vendor that advertises that dealers are bad to make them look good. I don't have any use for that vendor at all, and I don't think we should support them under any circumstances. Any okay. vendor like, like I always use Carfax for an example. Mm -hmm. They always had commercials where the dishonest lying car salesperson was lying to the customer, but thank God their little cartoon Fox ratted his ass out. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I see that more with uh, nowadays. You're seeing that more with the uh, Vrooms and not the Carvana really has. Oh, Vroom is yeah. the worst. Yeah. Vroom and Carvana I and mean, Carvana's kind of yeah, dug their own grave. their finances are. Yeah. And I think like the tough thing with Carvana is like, from a dealership perspective, I think a lot of people are, are jumping on this. Hey, let's bash Carvana and this, understand like there was a need for Carvana that as a dealer, Hey, there are, especially as a female, females have a really rough time going into a dealership because we're discounted so quickly. So there was definitely a need. And, and also from a younger generation, you see young, whether it's the Gen Z's or uh, just the younger generation, there's a reason why people would go to a Carvana. So from a dealership perspective, we should say, wait a second, there, that's actually working. The, the process, not the, obviously the dealership is needed. I want to be very, very clear. More brick and mortar, brick and mortar is so needed. Like not that Carvana needs to, I hope everyone knows what I'm saying here. The process itself of buying online and making it seamless, that portion is needed. Now, if people actually dug into the Carvana experience, a lot of some people know this, is that it's not all online. Be very clear, it's not online. I think I think that it's, a, it's an average of like 12 phone calls that someone has to, 12 actual phone calls that are needed uh, during the process of Carvana. They're not going to advertise that, but that is, and then the, yeah. But knowing that as a dealership level, to sit there and cast stones, now, 
while they did that to the us as dealerships, we shouldn't turn around and be like, oh yeah, you suck. Aha, uh-huh, you're going down. That's not what we should do because now how better are we than what they did to us? So well, you know, so Brooke, a lot of times I, I I say things to be provocative, but I've saved the big one for last. Oh um, goodness, here we go. All right. Okay. <laughs> digital retail. Oh, I, I I know your thoughts on this one. So Okay, uh, digital retail. You know where I'm at. I and, do. And I'm so, not gonna give you any trick questions where I take take the opposing view, but uh like I have and on occasion. Um, so I, I'm going to go back to my very first statement I said on here. If you are slapping a button on your website before you ever think working backwards to work forward, you have completely failed. So whether it's digital retailing, whether it's, hmm, should I put this button on my website because it's an orange button and think that I'm going to save the world? No. So why are you putting that button on your website? If you're putting that button on your website thinking, ah, I'm a digital retailer. Ah, I'm done. I'm good to go. No, you're not. No, you're not. What is your process? Have you brought every single player in your dealership to figure out, all right, F and I, here's what we're thinking about doing. What are your thoughts on it? Because if you haven't, F and I is going to revolt and you're going to fail. All right. Sales, service, BDC, uh, everyone, everyone here. This is what we're going to do. Let's talk about this. Okay. Have you done that first? All right. Have you vetted every single provided out there, or are you just going to go with the OEM one because they're literally extorting you and making you use our tool? Oh yeah, that's what we're doing. Good luck with that one. All right. Next thing. What is your branding of this tool? Are you thinking all of these things through? Have you taken all the old school forms off of your site? Have you made this actually conversational that someone can click on it and work through it? What's your trade-in tool? Is the same trade-in tool when someone says, I want to trade in, is that trade-in tool the same as what's in your DR tool? No, they're different. Great. Awesome Ooh. job. Now you have two different trade-in tools that aren't going to match up. Awesome. You're going to make your customer super pissed off of you. Great job on that one. So working all these different, this is just a very small percentage of what you, has to take place versus I'm going to slap a, tra- a thing on my thing. Then, well, we have a DR tool, but we also brought in Capital One. Then we brought in something else. We have an old school calculator payment here. All of these things have to be taken to place because now you have two separate DR tools on your site. They're going to be different. Okay. Well, now we're going to have 15 call to actions on our site. So you just confuse the hell out of customer. Awesome job on that one. Have you simplified the entire process? Do you have a video explaining what the tool is and how to walk them through? Then continually branding that tool throughout everything. So everybody knows what it is. If you, if your car, if you call it the red carpet express tool, there better be a freaking red carpet waiting for the person when they get there. If you say you're going to make it fast and the customer gets there and they have to start the whole process over again, bad job. I don't go, I don't order my thing on Starbucks and I order my chai tea latte and get to Starbucks and be like, Hey, you know what? Get to the back of the line and reorder. Cause if that's what you're doing, once again, you failed. If you haven't done all these, then digital retail has failed. If you have done every checkbox throughout the entire process, then digital retail as a whole will be successful. But at no point, if you don't do those, it's going to fail. Are you going to be a one person sales team, one person throughout the entire process, or are you going to let other people do it the same thing? Are salespeople going to be allowed to do F&I products? If not, okay, that's fine. Then move on. Are you going to offer a menu option, F&I menu options? All of these things have to be considered before you ever even think about putting a call to action button that says, Hey, we're going to offer things on the line. I'm going to deliver like these are, there's so many dominoes that have to fall and be set up before you ever even think about putting a little tiny button on your website that says you can shop online. That's my answer. Okay. So digital retail, there, there's about seven or eight digital retail companies and they, they, they were all born during the pandemic. Uh, they were all trying to emulate what they thought Carvana was doing, which wasn't really what Carvana was doing, but they, they thought it was what, what they were doing. So anyway, all these digital retail companies came out and dealers thought, and the manufacturers fell in love with it. Oh, we'll get the Tesla experience. But guess what? Didn't happen. Only a portion of people will fully transact on yep. any system. Mm-hmm. And a small portion uh, compared to the overwhelming big portion, it still will get, they will, they will fill out some forms. I, I went to the doctor this week. I filled out my forms in advance, but I still went to the doctor Mm -hmm. and I didn't get, do a video chat with the doctor. I went to the doctor, took my clothes off everything, you know, 
did, did the whole nine yards and didn't do it for the camera, you know. But <laughs> thank you for that visual, by the way. I mean, I counsel oh, Thank yeah. you. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, I, I was a hunk when I was young. But anyway, <laughs> oh, the show is off the rails, Jim. The show is off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. People did not transact online for the most part. And you know, Tesla is, is, is a niche. Yep. Carvana was a niche. Varum was a niche that never happened, you know. Uh, but they were all niches and they were all, and when, and when, the, when the pandemic died, Carvana died. If you think about it. You know, all of a sudden, it wasn't just the fact that they couldn't produce titles and they had bad, bad business and they they paid too much at the auction and all all the reasons people say they died. They 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 died because the pandemic died. I believe that in my they heart. They don't have any service either. Where are they taking the cars? Once the cars once the cars bought, who's servicing the car? There's exactly. no there's no there's no there's no fixed stops and variables. There's no parts. There's nothing. They need us to do that. That's, so a, that, that's no, re, no repeat got, referral business. That's the huge portion of it. We got Upstart Prodigy. We got uh, Roadster. We got Frickin' Tech. I mean, my God, look at all the, the names that have popped up in, 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 in that genre. And they are great sure showroom tools, by the way. I'm telling every dealer, you need to buy a digital retail tool. But don't expect it to totally transact uh, frictionless online because it won't. No, it's it's there to once again. You're you're there to meet the customer where they are. So whether the customer calls, whether the customer texts, whether the customer wants to see, hey, uh, I want to be here, but I only want to get this far in the process. Great, hey customer, Mister Customer, I saw. Hey, how many? I, I, whoever's still in the chat here, let me know. How many of you right now are using your your tool, whatever it is? And a lot of people right now have like three digital retailing tools on their site because they're being forced by the OEM to get another tool. But you say, hey, Mr. Mr. Customer, hey, I saw you got to the trade portion, but you didn't get any for Hey, I know you get busy sometimes. Maybe your kid, it's 11 o'clock at night. I saw that. Do you need any help? Did you get stumbled by something? But too often we just expect that the, we get busy or we expect that the tool is going to do it itself because things get happen. But are we actually using the technology to our advantage to say, hey, I saw that you got here. Hey, I saw you put in a trade of your, your 2021 uh, Hyundai Tucson. That's a great car. Do you have any questions about that? But too many people aren't taking advantage of that because you, you definitely would go you would definitely go a lot further on it. But the whole thing, yeah, the, the numbers that you go end to end, yeah, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. That's also why Carvana only had like 2% of the entire used car market. I mean, so using that technology to say, hey, you're here and then from here. But yeah, the, the streamlineness of it is is great, but no, not a lot of people are gonna go all the way through. Uh, yeah, no. Now, now uh, Stephen Stassi on the sidebar ask, I've been wondering, and, and I know um, certain CRMs have it built in. What do you think about video interaction with the customer? I, I think yeah. we're in the, the Zoom generation especially selling F&I. And I wonder why more dealers haven't done this. If, if I yeah. was consulting your dealership, we would have video interaction with the customers. What do you think? Yeah, so a great question. So actually 2010, Zoom didn't exist, right? So 2010, uh, shout out Jeff Perry, Buick GMC and Peru, Illinois. And we actually started, I was on the, uh, in my company, the first to do this, we started Skyping with dealers, Skyping with customers. And they loved it. I was it. an early adopter of Skype. You too? Yeah, 2010, we were Skyping with our, our customers. And I, so I was like, oh, you know, if they have, I, they have a, if they have an Apple, you know, see if the, it, obviously get their permission first. If they don't, let's Skype. And they go, can we do that? I go, why can't you? Ask them. And all of a sudden you just saw engagement skyrocket. So I've been doing this since 2010. So what was weird during the pandemic, what I saw was that we had, we had, uh, some of my clients had, uh, chat providers that could video chat and then others didn't, but we would always ask. And we had some certain pockets of the nation would want to have the video interaction. And others are like, nah, I'm good. And even now we we see both. I see some that really want to, but others like, nah, there, you get that zoom fatigue. We're like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to. So it's really, it's really important. Like all of my clients, they know this. If anyone's watching every single client, gets a video recap, even regular video emails. Like I, is the fourth oh, dimension. 
I, 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 can t I can send this video and get more across in three minutes than for me to type an entire email that you're probably not going to read. Like it's just so much quicker, so much quicker. So I, I'm a huge fan of it, huge advocate oh, of it. And much, much quicker than that, as fast as you speak. Yeah, right. I'm a fast talker. <laughs> but I got to tell you, I pioneered video in the automobile industry. It, 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 was, it was hilarious. It, 2006, picture this, 2006, I'm standing on the stage at Digital Dealer holding up my flip camera. And and I got 400 people in the audience. And I said, does anybody know what this is? Nobody knew what a flip camera was in that audience. And it was amazing because I had just been to the National Speakers Association convention a month earlier. And Terry Brock, their tech guy, had showed the flip camera. I didn't know anything about it until a month earlier. So I'm doing his presentation. I have stole his entire presentation to the Speakers Association. So I, I, I interviewed a woman in the front in the front row, walked up to the stage, shoved it in my laptop, downloaded it to YouTube, and emailed it to myself and projected it on the screen. And that was the technology of the day. And by one year later, everybody was running around flip cameras. And then I discovered Elise Kephart. <clears throat> I awesome. found her and brought her out to one of my conferences and, you know, she was doing what I was teaching better than I was. And I, I, I basically, she quit her dealership after I brought her out and um, became a, a vendor and uh, her dealer still pissed at me. <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that, that was the history of video in the car business. I was a pioneer. I was one of the early adopters before anybody else was thinking about it. And I still don't know why we don't do more video. You know, it's I, I battle this with some of my dealers where they actually have uh, they'll have a co video or they'll have something, and I'll just say, "Why are you not doing it?" And sometimes, well, we don't have time. I go, "But you have time to write an an email." Well, we're just going to send out a template, but that template isn't always right, and the customer knows. Like, it literally takes thirty seconds to do a video, so I I will get pushback, and yet I'll have other dealerships that swear by video. Well, obviously we all know why. So, I mean, I still get pushed back on it. And I, it really comes down to that mindset of, are we going to be progressive? Are we going to get with the times? Are we just going to do things the way they've always been done? And that's really what it comes down to. We're just going to do things the way they've always been done. Okay. Good luck I, with that. I, I, I believe that, but yeah, anyway, I, I know uh, drive centric has video built in their system and um, they do. Yeah. They do. Uh, they do. Uh, they, that's their tool. Um, that, so yeah, they're, they're, it's their tool that's built into it. Yep. hundred percent. They're yeah, yeah. And, um, a couple other CRMs. D does, does Vin have it yet? I don't know. They, uh, yeah, they kind of, that's the best answer. That's one of those band-aids I was talking about. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. What I do like my stores that have Vin, what you can do is that I will, I, 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 once again, product agnostic, if they're going to go that direction, I will always say, please demo co-video because co-video, what you can do, you literally just copy a link. And then from there, you can send out through, if you have Vince text messaging service, uh, you bomb, just bomb, bomb. Anybody using bomb, bomb? Mm -mm. Not that, it, no. No, not that, uh, it's out there. I know at least um, represents them, but, but um, yeah, video is, is still pretty strong, I, in the, especially with the text. Now, I've oh, got a huge. couple of dealerships that have uh, technology uh, in their service BDCs. Yeah, big. The service BDCs where the techs are actually communicating with a customer, doing a walk around, a video walk around on the repair that they need to do. Mm -hmm. And that's some technology your dealership needs to have. I had Bill Demery. Uh, I teach a class at Northwood University on how to be a general manager. And Bill Demery was my guest instructor yesterday. And all of his tech, all of his techs and service advisors are communicating with the customer via video. Yeah, As Steve, Stephen just said Loom. Stephen, I I use Loom every probably like ten times a day. I've used it, I think, four times a day. Mainly, I one I use all the time, but I because I can't really see right now. I've used it at least five times a day. Loom is phenomenal. I love it. I used to use Vidyard before then. Loom is way better. No, not to Vidyard, not trying to dish Vidyard. Just Loom is way better. Love it. And the one thing with uh, Loom is that from a CRM perspective, CoVideo just has way more integrations when it comes to uh, CRMs from our auto industry because our art, once again, auto industry just has a little bit more uh, 
restrictions when it comes to there's not just the, the whole API situation. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, love it. Would you Thank believe? You. Would you believe we have blown through one hour? I, I I wouldn't really would. I know there's a timer up here, but I can't see it. So I, I, it's flown by. It's flown by, Alpha Dog. We it's have, flown by. We have blown through an hour. We have put out some great information. I would I would hope the the, the people. Uh, appreciated what we did today because I so. we're touching on subjects that nobody else touches. It's, it's, it's been a good one, Mr. Jim. Mr. Jim, it has been awesome. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Okay, here, here it comes one last time. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. There thank you go. You. Brooke Furness with, BDC, with BZ Consultants Group. That's right. Uh, www.bzconsultantsgroup.com. That's right. And yeah. of course, you can find the Alpha Dog at ZieglerSuperSystems.com. You know, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going into dealerships, but I'm doing a lot of video consulting. Um, uh, you can you can hire me for ten thousand dollars a day all day long. So uh, remember, I'm out there. And wave goodbye to the audience, kid. <laughs>